Hi, welcome to bakingmad.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a gingerbread man recipe. Now, these don't have to wait until Christmas for you to dig out your recipe. These are great all year round and really, really fun to make with kids. It's so simple to do. So you begin with 100 grams of unsalted butter. What you want to do is in a medium sized saucepan, just pop the butter in. It's best if it's softened, but if you do forget and leave it in the fridge, don't worry because it's gonna get melted down anyway. So now your butter's in your pan, what you'll need to do is add 50 grams of light muscovado sugar. Now this type of sugar will make a real difference to the flavor of your gingerbread. It gives a lovely rich flavor to it. It also gives the nice dark brown texture that you're looking for in your nice gingerbread men. Okay, so the butter's now melted in the saucepan, as you can see, and all the sugar is kind of blended in nicely with it. Now what we need to do is add all of our dry ingredients. So I've got 225 grams of plain flour. To that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, and obviously the all-important ingredient, which is ginger. Now, this recipe calls for two teaspoons, but if you really like ginger, you can add an extra teaspoon or more. Again, if you're not that fond of the flavor, decrease it down a little bit, that's totally fine. What you're going to want to do is just make sure that it's all incorporated together nicely before you add it in with your butter and sugar. So I'm just gonna pour that into the saucepan. And with that, the ingredient that will stick your biscuits together is some golden syrup. Now a good tip for you when you're using golden syrup is to fill a glass with some boiling water. This means that when your measuring spoon is put into there, it will heat up, it will just make it a lot easier when you're pouring the golden syrup onto it to just gently drip off it so that it doesn't get too sticky. So you need to use five tablespoons of golden syrup so I've already pre-warmed my measuring spoon just to make it a little easier. And if you just pour that into the spoon, these bottles are really great because it just saves you having to delve your spoon in and get all sticky. They just pour straight on, which is perfect. And then it should just slide into your saucepan just like that. So all the ingredients are now in your pan. What you want to do then is just beat them together with your wooden spoon. You don't want to be too rough to start off with. And as you can see, it'll all start to come together now and to form a, a dough. So it will get a little bit tougher to mix together once you get into this stage. So the idea is just keep on beating it until it kind of brings itself together into a ball of dough. That's when you know it's almost at the right stage. So what I'm going to do now with this one is pop it in some cling film and we'll need to wrap this up and chill it in the fridge. So, here is our cling film. If we just pour it out of the saucepan, straight into the cling film. Just getting every little bit there. Just wrap it over. Now it's best to flatten it out as much as you can because when you're chilling it in the fridge, this means that the thinner it is, the quicker it will chill. And obviously you want to get ahead and get baking with your biscuits as soon as possible. So this is now all ready to go into the fridge. I'd leave it for about an hour, maybe even an hour and a half, just so that it's the right texture that you want to roll it out. If it's too sticky and loose, um, it's going to get stuck to your surfaces and you're not going to get the best biscuits out of it. So about an hour will do. Go and make a cup of tea and put your feet up. So our gingerbread dough has been in the fridge now for over an hour. It's a lot harder and it will be much easier to roll than it was before. So what I'm going to do is just get some flour, just lightly sprinkle the surface just so it, it stops the biscuit dough from sticking. A little bit more. You probably also want to just sprinkle some onto your rolling pin. And then going to unwrap the dough. One of the good things as well about it being so thin when we put it into the fridge is that it makes it a lot easier to roll out. So I'm just going to knead it just to loosen it up so that it's a bit easier to work with. 
Okay. And now what I'm going to do is just gentle rolling movements and turning the dough just to keep it from getting stuck. I'm just going to roll the dough out. Now you probably don't want too many cracks in it, so if you see them appearing, it's worth just trying to shape it back with your hands a little bit. The ideal thickness that you'll want is about the thickness of a one pound coin. I'm just going to top up the flour on the rolling pin. Now, gingerbread doesn't have to be in the shape of the, the classic gingerbread man. You could use whatever cutters that you fancy or that are in your drawer. I've chosen a nice, medium-sized gingerbread man um, to make the biscuits today. So my dough is about the thickness that I want now. So simply what I'm going to do is just push the cutter down onto one of the spaces. You might, there are two ways of doing this. You can either pull the dough from around it and release the one and then put it on your tray. Or if you've got space for another one or two on your dough, you might want to do it that way, which is what I'm going to do now. It's got room for another one up here. And I could just squeeze a third one down the bottom. Now, once you've cut out your biscuits, don't waste the dough. You'll get a lot more out of it. So if you just mould it back together and roll it again, then you can make a lot more biscuits out of this. So I'm just going to pull away the dough from around your biscuits. I'm just using either a knife or a palette knife like I am. Just kind of release the biscuits from underneath. And then you want to just pop them onto a baking tray. Now, because this dough has been in the fridge, um, it's unlikely to spread too much in the oven because the butter's hardened up a little bit. But if, if you're not quite sure whether it will or not, I would just keep them quite far away on your baking sheet like this. So just a little bit of space in between them. It does mean that you won't get too many on your tray. We'll probably get about four on this one. So you might have to do more trays of biscuits afterwards. Okay, so that's our biscuits all ready to go into the oven. If you preheat your oven to about 190 degrees Celsius, which is gas mark five, they'll need to be baked for about 10 to 12 minutes. When they come out of the oven, they may not be as hard as you'd recognize a normal biscuit, but they will harden up, so don't panic too much. They should be a lovely, nice brown color. Um, bring them out and then cool them down on a tray. So that's your biscuits out of the oven. So what I'm going to do is just move them onto a cooling tray and then leave them to cool down completely before they're iced. They work really well with some royal icing. You can just pipe on little faces, and maybe add on some sweets for buttons down the side. So there you have it. That's your simple gingerbread recipe.